Welcome to a video that shows how to use a library called Missing NO. Uh, I'm going to explore a data set that I first learned of through a site called DataQuest.io, and I'll use pandas to read their CSV uh, from uh, GitHub. I also need to install the Missing NO library. Uh, we can collapse that output using the blue bar, and then I'm going to import the library. And normally, if I'm doing visualizations, I'll use matplotlib, so that's just sort of in here as a reminder if I need that later. Then I'm going to use pandas read CSV function to load the address uh, from this URL. So here's github.com and then the place where the data is hosted. Also, I've wrapped that in a timer so I can say start time is time.time, .time. that's the current time, and then I'm going to stop my stopwatch basically here and take the difference between those and we'll see how long that download and reading takes and does. Once that, so this is the star here, it indicates it's, indi it's executing, then it changes to a fork, it's the fourth cell that was executed, and it took about nine seconds to, de to download and, and read it in memory. Once I've got my data frame, then I'll use the shape command and see that there's 42,535 rows by 102 columns. So again, normally, if I wanted to uh, see all that data, I would use one of these two options here. So I can say pandas display max rows or set option display max columns. Either of those should work. And uh, I want to see what the top of my data frame looks like. And I'll just transpose that uh, so I can see that, that there's 102 columns here. Uh, on the left hand side and then the first few rows as my uh, screen shows on the right. So again, uh, rather than scroll through all the way down, I'm just going to collapse this bar here. Now we'll get to the, the missing NO library use. So rather than try and display all of the rows, I'm just going to randomly sample from my data frame. So that's the sample command, and here I'm going to I'm going to take 25 rows and plot what that looks like. So as I sort of uh, describe here, each of these black things that's a column in my data frame, of which there are 102, and when it's black, it means there are no nans, and when the column is white, that means it's all nans. So here with these combinations of black and white, there's some gaps here where this is uh, mostly NANs and then the rest of the column has values. So there's a lot of columns in our sampling of 25 selections that have nothing in them. And then at the far right side, you see what's called a spark line. This is just giving you some sense of the density of the various uh, rows. And so this is showing the maximum and the minimum number of rows. 25 uh, randomly selected rows might not be representative since we have 42,000. So I would play with, I would suggest playing with um, an extra uh, slightly larger sample. So here I'm going to run 20, uh, 250 rows and you can see uh, the, the selection looks a little bit more random in the sense of here, there were just a few gaps. Um, whereas when I plot more of those, uh, I can see that there's a little bit more complexity going on. But again, it's still not the complete data set. But at some point, um, you sort of lose the ability to make sense of it's just a bunch of gray in that column, which means it's, it's mostly uh, sparse. The other thing to note here is that there are some rows where there looks like there's some correlations. Like here, this seems to have more NANs in that row, and that cuts across. So again, you might want to sample different subsections of the data frame to see if that occurs more frequently. So in order to make uh, my plot a little more useful, what I'm going to do is I recognize that this these columns here are probably going to be mostly empty. 
So I wanna, I'm going to start with 102 columns. And then from a previous analysis, um, I, I think that the ID column should be dropped. And then I can drop all the rows that are empty and the columns that are empty. I'm also going to drop the columns where there is a value, but that's the same value for every row or for every entry in the column. Sorry. So I run that and I reduce the shape of my data frame from 102 columns down to just 57 columns. But I haven't eliminated any of the rows. So again, I can still plot this matrix and now it looks a little bit different because I've dropped those columns that were all empty. And now uh, you know, it, it has obviously more black because there are all the empty columns are removed. All right, the last thing that I'm going to show from this library is this question of like, what, it, what is the coral? Is there any correlation between this set of missing entries here and maybe something over in some other columns? So we'll talk about uh, dendrograms later in the, in the class if you're taking the class with me. But this dendrogram basically shows the correlation between all of these columns in our data frame. The sparseness of that column is correlated with all of the other entries in that set. And all of these predict each other as far as sparseness. Um, so the, the lower they are on the dendrogram, the more likely they are to correlate. All right, so that's just a visual analysis of sparseness using the missing NO library.